Hello everyone, Genesis Writer here with a in-depth theater film analysis of a gameplay I got while playing the Big Team Battle playlist in Halo 5. I played the game type Big Team Slayer on the map Scavenger. I ended up getting 20 kills and 4 deaths for the highest number of kills in the game out of anyone and the lowest deaths of anyone in the game. The person I killed the most in the enemy team was the player who performed the best on the enemy team. Contrary to what you might think from the beginning of this film, no, I don't have a tool destruction of the ghost. I have actually a tool destruction of the battle rifle, and we only win by 10 kills. So this is a rare film because it very accurately shows a single player decidedly carrying or winning the game for their team. So. I want to kind of break this down from my POV and explain to you step by step what my thought process is and I'll hopefully give you guys tips and tricks on how you can perform better in online matchmaking. Now a few things to note, no this is not some highly intense or competitive gameplay. I was solo searching so I don't actually know any of the players in this game. Uh, yes, I think one or two of my teammates did quit. We had at least seven people at all times. Uh, just realize that this is theater mode, so if there are bugs and glitches, for example, if my reticle, my targeting reticle is not placed on a player when I'm shooting them and getting the kill, that is a glitch in Halo 5's theater mode, not how it appeared live when I was actually playing the game. So as long as you guys understand that, let's get straight into the gameplay here. So off the start, I'm going to be taking the Warthog and I'm going to go straight for the Ghost, which spawns into the top junction area. And this is probably the fastest route you can take. Um, at least you can take the Warthog, turn it around, go up here, over here, and jump it across this barrier and go behind over here to the, where the ghost is. But oftentimes what will happen is the enemy team, because the enemy team spawns over here in this area, they will grab the plaza pistol, which spawns in this red pipe area, and they'll pla charge plasma pistol you as you j make this jump over top mid to the top red area. So what I'm going to do is kind of take the safe route and I'm going to go underneath. And this is also a really fast way to get to the ghost. So my random teammate hops in. And I'm going to go straight up here to the ghost. Now ideally if you had a teammate in your passenger, they would be able to get out and get to the ghost. As you can see this guy is... Uh, on his way to the ghost. I'm not sure why he pauses and decides to throw a plasma grenade. The reason I'm switching to third person here is because it's very difficult uh, in first person to see what actually happens. I've, re I've watched this film several times. This is why I'm pulling the camera to third person here. So as I'm getting into the ghost, um, I you can get into the ghost from a lot of different angles. You can jump over it, like over the top of it, and I'm just holding down the button. So as I get into the ghost, uh, one of the things I didn't do here is I needed to immediately turn and face the front of my ghost towards these enemy players. But because I wasn't aware of whether this guy had died yet or not, I kind of just decided to zoom out of there if I could. And somehow the Warthog levitates in midair, allowing me to go under it as I get away. Very, very lucky. I don't honestly expect that to happen often during a game. Just realize if you're doing this strategy, you need to turn and face the enemy players and back your ghost down so that they're not actually hitting your body, they're hitting the front of your ghost. Your ghost needs to tank most of that damage. Almost run over my teammate there. And the enemy Warthog is pushed there, pushed behind us here. And so I'm just gonna try to ignore, or not ignore, but uh, stay away from this enemy Warthog at all costs. So right then, uh, I'm not sure if you guys were able to hear it, but I was immediately able to tell from my surround sound headset that a player near me had a plasma pistol, which this guy does. He just switched off of it after trying to charge shoot me. Um, I was able to boost away just in time. He didn't get the lock, uh, probably because he wasn't zooming, probably because he's not a very good player. And that's the only reason I'm able to escape with my life here. But I hear the charge plasma shot hit the ground behind me and I'm gonna go ahead and boost out of this location. I still don't know where the enemy hog is, but you don't wanna directly engage the enemy hog. Um, that hog is not gonna get that many kills, and so you just wanna kind of play it safe. Right here, you see me jump over the rock ramp to back red. Now, why would I make this play? 
Uh, I just want to kind of explain here a little bit why this is important to do this pretty consistently. When I'm jumping over this red rock ramp area, what I'm hoping to find is that enemy players have spawned right in this location, okay? And one of the things that I also know is that the Warthog is not going to be over here in this back red area. It's very unlikely that the Warthog will actually be back here. The reason I say that is because the Warthog would actually have to jump, they'd have to make this jump across this pipe to this back red area because you can't necessarily drive a hog up this side. Now I'm sure, you know, expert Warthog drivers could do a lot, for example, like driving up here through this little uh, area, although that's pretty hard to do. But you kind of get my point here. So um, as I go over here in the Ghost, I'm expecting to find players who have spawned over here. You can see one of my teammates has spawned here instead. So I know that, you know, there's not going to be any enemy players over here. It's safe to say that I can go ahead and push through. But that's kind of why I make that decision. And I'm hoping that that guy who had a plasma pistol, because he was in the bottom of the map, he grabbed this and then dropped to the bottom of the map, where the plasma pistol was before. So that's why I'm rotating around this back area, hoping that he's not going to be here. Now, I just saw that this player spawned right here. This is a very, very common spawn, okay? I'm going to show you the four main spawn points that are really important to keep track of. Right here behind this rock, the top junction spawn, I'd say it's a medium frequency spawn. Uh, right here is a relatively high frequency spawn, right here in this area. Uh, down here is a pretty high frequency spawn. You can spawn here, you can spawn behind the rock ramp as well. And back here in the back blue area is also a pretty relatively high frequency spawn as well. Those are the main four spawn points that you need to be aware of. I'm not saying you can't spawn anywhere else in the map. I'm just saying those are the main ones you need to keep track of. And just remember in the back of your head, I mean, this, this guy literally spawned as I was looking at him. Probably because I was in a vehicle, it didn't auto-detect that I was looking at the spawn point. I don't really know. Maybe the rock blocked the bottom of the spawn point, which is probably sitting right here on the ground. Who knows what the actual reason for that is. So I'm able to push up here. I'm able to get some good shots on this guy, but you I, you can see the hog just pushes over and he's waiting to get a teammate up here, which is exactly what I thought was going to happen. If I had dropped my ghost down here, I'd be trapped out in the middle of nowhere. The hog would probably be able to chase me. Yes, you can get away from the hog quick, quickly with the ghost because you have a boost, but it's just better to play it safe. There's no real reason for me to push out here. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and push out because... I recognize that, okay, this hog hasn't pushed me yet, so I'm hoping that the hog is back down or that they are loading up the hog, something to that effect. That's why I suddenly push out there and just give that for a little brief pause of time. Sure enough, they were loading up or switching the hog, I'm not sure. So these guys go around. Now what you're gonna see me do here is I'm gonna force the gunner to turn all the way around to look at me. When a gunner has a low acceleration or a low sensitivity, it is going to be much harder for them to turn and look at you. And he has to track me all the way down this ramp. And I'm going to be able to turn and then boost away. And so he doesn't get that many shots off on me. If I had, you know, just done an average maneuver, like boosted up to the top, this top area here, he would have gotten at least three more shots into me. So it's very important to um, play with your maneuverability of the ghost and run kind of run circles around them even when you're just dodging them like I am right now. Now the reason I don't go the reason I don't go for that kill that you saw over there is because I'm low shield so I'm trying to not boost into a bunch of enemy players so I'm just rotating around. If the hog did happen to chase me, the hog would have to turn multiple times to track me and the ghost is way faster at doing that. I almost run over my teammate here because he slides into my way. Uh, so this guy spawned there, I'm pretty sure. They loaded up the hog again, so I really have to get out of this location. Um, so I'm boosting into the back blue spawn. I don't want to stay back here too long, okay? Like this area that I'm in right now, you don't want to necessarily hang around in this area, regardless of what you have, whether it be a ghost or not. It's because you're pulling the spawns for your teammate back here. It's more likely that your teammates are gonna spawn back here because you're back here. Also, this bright light that you see on the side of my ghost, 
What that is is the little side cap has been minute, uh, removed because you've been shot a certain number of times. If you want to destroy your ghost really, really quickly, this is essentially one of the weaker points of the ghost. Um, just to let you guys know, it that this is not normally exposed unless you've been shot at a, several times. So I can see that these players are top center. So I'm going to try to get some good shots off on these guys. That's a, Those are some pretty good shots. And then the ghost from me. I don't think that guy even recognized exactly where he's being shot. You can see that that hog rotated all the way behind me. And then, or he maybe even had gone through here. And you can see he gets a few more shots off me, but not on me. But I'm using my third person perspective. Notice how, you see how I pull the ghosts around here? And you can see how part of my ghost is blocked by this wall. I'm using the third person perspective that the ghost gives me because I'm not, it's not first person. I'm not, my, my perspective is not inside the ghost. Okay. So my, I can use my third person perspective to look around walls that I wouldn't normally be able to see around if I was just a normal Spartan. I'm doing that constantly when I'm in the ghost. It's extremely important to do that. Probably one of the, one of the best things about using a ghost. So I charge over here. Now you may, may be wondering, why am I following so closely behind the hog? Why am I pushing over here? Remember what I said earlier in the film about the hog uh, going off this ledge that, that the hog just did just now? The hog cannot turn around and double back and get back on top of here. What that means is that I can effectively push behind the hog and kill people off their respawn that the hog forces to spawn there. So the hog, because it drove past this area, this guy spawned here. And again, I've watched the film multiple times, so I could go back and show you this, but I'm not going to rewind the film because that glitches the theater mode film out. But he does, this guy does spawn right here. And so I'm catching this guy off his respawn and making the enemy team pay for giving their teammate a poor respawn. So I'm catching anybody back here, sweeping through here. I didn't know that guy was going to spawn there. I just guessed. And it's really important to make educated guesses like this, or at least make guesses and make proactive plays like this and try to get something to happen. Otherwise, you're just going to be wandering around back blue, giving your teammates bad spawns. You want to move into a more likely area. Um, being over here is better anyway for my teammates, because if they spawn here, uh, like this teammate just did, this teammate just spawned there, that's actually a way better spawn than if my teammate spawned down here on that main spawn I mentioned or in back blue uh, like this guy is right now. It's just way better that my teammates are over there. So I, I can see that this guy is kind of sitting right here. Now, my worry here is that this player has picked up two plasma grenades. Two plasma grenades spawn right here on the ground where I'm pointing the camera. And I also see that this, this hog is flaming off to the side here. I'm not exactly sure why, but I'm going to absolutely take advantage of this, hopefully wondering if this hog was dropped by this player because it was on fire, maybe. That oftentimes happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my advantage right now to explode this hog so that enemy players don't have it. Those two uh, plasma grenades respawn right there. I'm going to push out here, turn around, and force this guy to run into my teammates. Uh, I wasn't able to save my teammate there, but at least my teammate picks up the kill. I can see that rockets are up, but I do hear in the distance that the enemy hog is still going. I can also see this red X that just popped up, and also in the kill feed, which the kill feed is very, very laggy in theater mode, and I apologize for that. There's nothing I can do. But also in the kill feed, I'm noticing that it's a hog that is killing my teammates. Very important thing to notice. Um, I can see the rocket launcher is up. Many new beginner players would probably jump out of the ghost for this power weapon. You do not want to do that. The ghost is way more useful than any four rockets are going to be able to, to be. It's more useful than the scatter shot, the gravity hammer, the overshield. It's game changing if you play this map right with a ghost. So much better to hang on to that. This guy ground pounds down, but the hog sweeps in and just annihilates me. Um, that's just a really good play by the hog. You can now understand kind of why I was trying to avoid the hog uh, throughout the film there. I just want to pause briefly and mention something. You may be wondering, why am I keeping my name tag up on the bottom center of your screen? Uh, why don't I just turn that off like I did just now? The reason being is because theater mode is incredibly glitchy and it will randomly switch me to another teammate's POV 
randomly during the game, even though I'm not dead. And I have to really, really keep track of who whose POV we're currently showing on the screen. So I apologize for that. That's just something that's broken by Halo 5 Theater Mode. I can't control this. Now, what you saw me do right here, you saw me jump up this side ramp to get up here. Now, this play that I'm about to make is very subtle, but it's very, very important. I know where all the plasma grenades spawn on this map. I showed you some earlier, but here is another location for two plasma grenades. This hog that the enemy has is still rolling, okay, and the gravity hammer normally spawns right here, and it's not here right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to wait in a location that I know the hog will drive through, and I'm going to attempt to stick the hog. Now, instead of just running out blindly and running, you know, running up here or doing whatever, which is probably what a new beginner player would do, I am cognitively aware that the grenades are going to spawn here, so I go ahead and run over and grab them, and then I push up this ramp, making sure to switch to my plasma grenade so that I'm ready for the hog. And, conveniently enough, here comes the hog, I'm able to double stick it, kill the gunner, and I'm able to get some pretty good shots in this hog, and now this hog is on fire. So if that guy doesn't get out of the hog, I don't know. I don't know what his purpose is. Now, this little clamber that you're seeing me do right here, it's really important to do this. A lot of players would just walk up this ramp, okay? The reason you don't want to do that is because you can't walk down fast enough to avoid two people shooting at you at the same time. You can walk up this ramp only to have someone walk out right behind here or walk out and spawn right behind here. You can see that because I just walked up here, my teammate just respawns here. That's very convenient that I'm actually finding this. I didn't find those respawns when I first watched the film, which is really cool that I can show you guys that. But what you want to do is you want to jump up here and clamber because if I was immediately being shot at, I could back up around this corner, okay? Or I could just immediately drop down. I have options. I'm giving myself options in case I'm being fired at by multiple people. So now that I don't see anyone, I'm going to go ahead and jump over here and clamber. This is very important to always, when you're on this rock ledge, to clamber up onto this area and not try to jump into the center of the pipe. Why? Because I immediately have a height advantage on top center. Now, it's not much of a height advantage, but I'm able to immediately peak top center, so to speak, so that I can see whether players are there. Now, just now, I know you weren't able to actually hear this, but you can see my shields flare. Unfortunately, I had the film pause, so you weren't able to hear the sound effect. But my teammate just got shot from the right. So I'm going to go ahead and back this enemy player down, shooting his feet as he backs around the corner. Then I'm going to pop out and continue to pursue this kill and clean that guy up. That was actually the highest scoring player on the enemy team, just to let you know. Uh, that's like one of, I think, seven times I killed him. Using my teammate here, I jump away from this pulse grenade. One of the things you want to always do, especially if you just cleaned up a player and the player is trying to martyrdom nade you um, from their death, basically trying to kill you, you want to thrust your pack away from the grenade. It's a very, seems obvious, seems like an obvious thing to do, but you wouldn't believe the number of times you'll save your life by doing this. This is a great little hiding spot that I love to use. Um, if you stand right between the pillars, not on the side like I'm doing here, but if you stand actually directly between these two little pillars, it's a great hiding spot and you can easily clamber up to either uh, generator, I guess. Pillar, generator, however you want to call it. So I'm just peeking out here, looking around for enemy players. I should have noticed that the plasma pistol was up in the pipe. I didn't notice that, which is my bad. Um, but I do know that the ghost that I died with earlier in the film respawns in 1 minute and 30 seconds after its destruction. Or should I say, 90 seconds after its destruction. It will respawn here. Now I want to briefly mention a very important note about timing most vehicles in the game. Especially the wasp and the ghost. If you can get in the ghost, if you can still drive the ghost, if you can still drive a wasp, it is not destroyed, which means that you have to wait for it to despawn or wait for it to be destroyed before that the, t the countdown timer begins. So that 90 seconds I just mentioned about the ghost respawning, I have to wait till the ghost is destroyed. So luckily, you saw earlier in the film how I was down here and the ghost actually blew up while I was in it. Well, 
that's convenient because now I know it spawns exactly 90 seconds from then. But if I had been shot out of the ghost and the ghost was laying on the ground still usable, that's bad because then I won't know exactly when the ghost is going to respawn because I don't know when it will despawn off the map. So that 90 second countdown timer starts when it despawns off the map or someone, someone else gets in it and it's been destroyed. So it's really tr more tricky to time if you don't know when it's actually destroyed and not usable anymore. So now I run over here, you can see the game's pretty close, 32 to 31, and I'm going to use this really nerdy and sneaky spot that I really want to show you guys during this film. It's very cool. A lot of players don't know the, this on Scavenger. Yes, this is the updated version of Scavenger, so you can, still can use this spot. You jump up here and clamber onto this little ledge that I'm, that I'm looking at right here, okay? Then, and it's sometimes hard to see on your screen, if it's hard to see... Uh, what I'm pointing out right now, one of the things you need to go into your settings and do go to audio video and turn up your brightness. I always keep my brightness on four uh, just because things like this are a little bit more easily visible. So now you, after clambering on this little ledge, you want to jump to your left here and then clamber up onto this little bit. Okay. Now you're going to see me use this little jump throughout the rest of the film a little bit. So I'm not going to go over it too much. But this little hidey spot is amazing, and you're going to see me use it later in the film. So right now what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking around, seeing where my teammates are, trying to hang around in this top junction area, and waiting for the ghost to respawn. So I'm just waiting, uh, timing the ghost. I know the ghost is going to be up soon, so I explode these barrels. Sure enough, the ghost is up. I actually mistimed that by a few seconds. So I'm going to run over here and go ahead and get in the ghost. Now you may have wondered, okay, why didn't I, you know, why didn't I run all the way over from here and, and stand on the ghost spawn? Well, yes, you can hide in the shadows over here. You can crouch and hope that no one's going to notice you and wait for the ghost to respawn. However, let's say I'm over here on this rock ramp and a warthog charges around the corner right as the ghost respawns. I can effectively take out one of them before they get to the ghost. If I'm standing over here and the gunner sees me and gets shots on me, I can't do that. The, no, people pushing up this rock ramp won't see you if you crouch up here and you're just waiting for them. So that's kind of the mentality and the reason behind why I made that play, just to give you an idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and push down here and I'm looking, I'm pushing through these spawns, this back blue spawn, I just go past it, see if anyone spawns there. Sure enough, Two players have just respawned in back blue. Both of them have pushed up this area. I promise you they respawn back here. One of them, I immediately uh, kind of glance a little bit and I see that he may have a plaza pistol. I'm not quite sure because I see a little green glow. This is your greatest enemy. The second plasma pistol spawns right here on this bridge with this, which this guy has picked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flank behind these guys, rotating around the outside of the map with my ghost. I'm, I'm flanking them in the center. I get some easy, an easy kill here. This guy ends up plasma pistoling me, which is unfortunate. I wasn't able to see that he had a plasma pistol. I just was showing you that early in the film. And then I make a really new mistake. So you can actually affect which side of the ghost you get out on. Many, many people in many, many Halo games are confused at how you do this. Okay, I've actually had really good players tell me that you use your movement stick, the, the movement analog stick in your controller that you use to move your Spartan, that's how you control which side of the ghost you get out on. That is not true whatsoever. The actual way you control which side of the ghost you get out on is your movement analog stick. So if you pull your movement analog stick all the way to the right, and then you press and hold the get out button, the same button you use to get into the vehicle, you will get out on that side of the ghost. But if you just get out normally, if you just get out without touching the movement stick, most if not all the time you will get out on the left side. But you can see here right now how because I've gotten EMP, that's what this flashing green is, because I've gotten EMP'd my ghost has turned its orientation so I choke in the moment, 
I go ahead and press the get out button. And when I do, I actually get out straight into this next guy's EMP and he takes out all my shields. If I had gotten out on the right side of the ghost, regardless of the orientation of my targeting reticle, if I'd gotten out on the right side of the ghost, the EMP would have instead hit the ghost, not me, allowing me to effectively dodge it and bait this guy using my ghost as cover, allowing me to shoot through this center area. Because the EMP, well, EMP's vehicles, it's gonna, it's going to explode EMP wise on the ghost first before it hits me, if that makes any sense. Yes, it's possible to EMP the driver's shields and the ghost at the same time, but it's very rare, okay? So I just really choked there as a, as a whole, and that's just a bad play on my part. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back over to my POV and we'll continue watching the film. So at this point, you know, I'm kicking myself because we're already down a kill and it's just really kind of unfortunate. And you can see, what did I just do off my respawn? Seems like, you know, seems like your everyday movement, not really. You wanna go for the plasma grenades instantly. I know they have that ghost. I know that ghost is gonna be pushing around. I gotta be prepared for it. So instead of making some dumb play and running around the map, like an idiot, I'm just gonna crouch here and I'm just gonna, oh, there's the ghost on my radar, okay? Now my teammate has picked up the plasma pistol and he's going to EMP the ghost later, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some warning shots on the ghost. Hopefully the ghost comes back around when, when a ghost gets hit like this by a player. It's always in the ghost driver's mind, oh, I wanna go back around to that area and see if that guy's still there and catch him off guard. That, so I know that that's probably what that ghost driver's thinking. Sure enough, he comes straight back around, kills two of my teammates, and I'm sitting here waiting for him. I'm trying to make this ghost driver think that he can get an easy kill on me. I want him to push up really close to me so I can stick him, okay? So I'm kind of peeking out. I run off to the right here, ho hoping that'll pop out, but he doesn't. Um, my, I can hear my teammate has a plasma pistol or someone has a plasma pistol near me So I'm trying to be aware of that, but I can see you know, we just give, we've just given like six straight kills to the enemy team So I'm just trying to play it passive. I see this guy suddenly has overshield So I use my thruster pack trying to get behind cover right here. This is a great maneuver on my part Dodging behind this using this little uh, pipe that this guy was behind to stay alive. I don't know why in the world this guy didn't jump. That's just his fault. So I back up here. I can see the ghost immediately pushes to my left. Now, just just to be clear, okay, if I had not made this jump right here, this clamber jump, I would be 100% dead in this scenario. Why? Because I have next to no, if no shields. What that means is that if I back around this corner, all the way up to here, the ghost can still kill me. I just burned my thruster pack. There's no way for me to get away from this ghost and getting a random sticky on him is likely impossible. The ghost would still kill me by that point. So clambering up to this ledge, knowing that this ledge is here, saves my life in this scenario. Don't know how else to put it, very, very useful jump. So I'm gonna head stay alive here. This ghost sees that and just goes, holy crud. Now, what you just saw just now, that I did not switch player POVs. I did not switch player POVs. That is the film doing that, and I sincerely apologize. But guess what? I've kept track of this guy who has an overshield. I know this guy has an overshield still here. And this angle is godlike. I peek out, kill him. He doesn't even know where I was. Okay? So now, just to let you guys know, you can jump and clamber onto this dark red rock. A little hard to see, but I'm showing you it right now. And you can completely see all this top area. This is actually one of the this is one of the first places you're going to be spotted from is this DMR. This guy who normally grabs this DMR that spawns right here. Okay. It's a recon DMR. He'll normally spot you over here. You see a little blue, uh, little, still a little hard to spot due to the mild fog effect applied on scavenger, but it's, it's a useful spot nonetheless. Also, when you're on top of this red rock, if you're, uh, playing strongholds on this map, you can look to your left and see most, if not all, of the stronghold on your left. And you can hit people's feet even when they're on the left here. It's a really cool spot. So I end up getting the kill on this guy. I hear my teammate EMP this guy. I stick him. And it's just an unfortunate series of events. I was honestly under the impression that my teammate was going to try to 
not Jack the Ghost there, but that's completely my bad. Um, I needed to be more aware here. Now, remember what I said earlier about the DMR guy spotting you? That's exactly what happened there. So this guy sitting over here uh, with a weapon jumping over, I'm pretty sure that was a DMR. So I'm just gonna hop back up here and you may be wondering, well, okay, you just got shot from here, you're gonna die. Actually, if you crouch right here, almost no one can see you. I just kinda wanna show you this from a third person perspective. If you crouch up in that corner, people have to be all the way over here to actually see you. And from this perspective, when people are pushing around this corner, you can see how you can't see me. Like I should be actually up, I'll, I'll do it right here. You see how you can't see me until it's right here, and even then, if my shields weren't flaring, it'd be ridiculously hard to see me. People are just not looking for you to be here. It's a great little spot. So I'm just crouching up here, waiting for my shields to regenerate, because no one can really see me here. Watching my radar very carefully, I notice this guy push down. I wait for him to move past me, and then I'm going to flank two guys from behind. I get assist on one of them. I see this guy's up here, so I'm just going to crouch up here, wait for my shields to regenerate. I'm not trying to jump out and get a bunch of kills. I'm not trying to suddenly engage players. I'm just patiently baiting people in on my radar. That being said, I'm not just going to let this guy push out and kill my teammate. No way. But I'm going to use my teammate usefully to double team them. He's dead. Okay. This is effective radar in teammate use. I can't stress it enough. When you play around your teammates like this, it does wonders for a game. I, again, I go 20 and four in this game. When you play a game like this and you're timing the ghost, you're just gonna be a ruthlessly effective player in your team. So right here, I get some a AR shots. And once again, at this point in the film, the POV always switches. I've watched this film three times now. It always switches at this point. I apologize, there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm gonna switch back to my POV. I do actually end up getting the kill on this guy. Um, questionable pulling out the assault rifle there drop down pick up some ammo jump back into my little hiding spot notice that my teammate ran by me in a warthog so that's i mean that's good that my teammates are running the warthog over they're gonna have to move really fast this is actually one of the best maps to run a hog on there are other maps where it's situationally useful but as far as getting the most kills against a team that's not that good and this enemy team isn't that good if you go really fast in the hog and you rotate through the spawns fast enough, you can actually stay alive for a lot longer than you might think. Against a good team, it's not going to be that great. This guy flies at me, and I'm just going to punish him. Uh, so right here, you can kind of see how I'm pogo sticking up in the air. I'm just checking if enemy players are there. I'm not actually trying to clamber up on this rock. I'm not even sure you actually can. You can clamber up to this guy on your right, which is what I'm doing. Now, so we're just going to... Peek around. I'm going to turn on the observer mode so you can actually see that there is a player down here. I'm not just nading this. This guy actually tries to push in. You see this nade that I throw? You see how it backs this player down? You see how it forces him down below? He's crouching here. He, he's unsure. He's like, how does this guy How does this guy know I, I'm there? That's the reason I'm throwing those grenades. Not just throwing them from their reason. So I see, I see that down there. I throw a nade. I shouldn't have done that. I think my teammate actually gets... No, he doesn't get damaged by it, thankfully, but it was almost almost a bad play there. I pick up the two plasma grenades that just spawned. Okay, they respawn really fast. It's great to have those. Um, I throw a plasma grenade over here because I really just don't want players to push up while I'm about to grab the ghost. I'm aware of the ghost spawning right now. Okay, that's why I threw that plasma grenade. You're not going to use plasma grenades while you're in the ghost necessarily, but I do keep one plasma grenade just in case I get hijacked. Maybe when I get hijacked, I get kicked out of the ghost, I can th turn and throw a plasma grenade at the person who just jacked me. You want to be thinking through those things, just making sure. 90 seconds to ghost respawn. I knew it when it was coming up and I'm able to time it. Uh, we're down by five kills still, so I really have to clutch it for my team here. I'm going to use this little jump over here as I get shot in the back. That's a questionable maneuver on my part, but I'm able to escape. I see the hog went that way, but I'm almost positive the enemy team is going to load it up. Sure enough, they do, uh, but thankfully they run off that side ridge, and I'm able to get this guy who has rockets here. I give that, hopefully, to my teammate who's going to push over there. I, I see that my teammate just killed that guy, so I'm going to rotate around and try to keep enemy players from tanking. 
uh, from flanking my teammates. So I'm just rotating through the spawns here. I don't see anybody on my radar. Always want to be watching your radar when you're going over this rock ramp in case people are actually down here. I check this respawn back here and then I'm going to decide to flank around rock ramp again. Just to make sure, because in this time span, enemy players could have spawned here. Okay, I'll kind of show you where everyone is right now. You can see that there's players over here. Turns out, players did spawn there. Okay, so my guess is correct. Players did spawn there. They're just not there right now. They just decided to push all the way up over here. Okay, so easy double kill. Okay, this is... Why I flank through this back area with the ghost, jump over the ramp, easy double kill, not even able to kill me. Push up here, able to get some more shots on this guy. Kind of sloppy shots, but he, he was pretty good at dodging there. I see that this guy is, is uh, this is a great use of the third person, by the way. I can see this guy is up here, okay, hiding by the barrels. I have no idea how my teammate doesn't see this. But he's running up there, and I'm like, oh, maybe I can shoot the barrels, protect my teammate. But I can't, and I can't save my teammate. I get shot in the back, so I immediately am going to boost away. Uh, there's really no sense in, uh, you know, trying to turn and immediately challenge these guys. So I just back down, away from my shields to fully regenerate. Then I push back up here. I can see my teammate going around here. You can see how many angles I'm able to get, but holy crud, there comes the enemy hog. I need to get the heck out of dodge. And I get plasma pistols in the back and shot out of the ghost. Very unfortunate. You can see now why the ghost is not my tool of destruction in this game. But my teammate notices that I've been killed out of the ghost. I respawn here. I'm able to look across as he gets into that vehicle and mans it. So I run, pick up the rocket launcher while all this is being said and done. And I'm... This is a classic example of me playing this way too fast. When I saw that this guy had a scatter shot, my immediate thought was... I need to kill him as quickly as possible. This guy doesn't see me. So there's no reason why I needed to try to quickly get this kill. I choke a rocket completely. There's no way that rocket's going to hit him. And this second rocket, I have no idea why this guy doesn't thruster pack. Somehow it hits him and kills him. I have no idea how. Then I sprint out into the open, try to reload my rocket, see a guy long range, try to get some shots into him, then get shot from the right. I haven't reloaded my rockets because I'm playing the game too fast. If I had just stayed over here and not sprinted out in the middle of nowhere, I wouldn't be in this position. I could easily back up and stay bottom red. But instead, I try, you know, I just try to run around, try to run away. There's no way I'm getting away with that. That's just a poor play on my part. I should have, pull I should have played that just a lot slower. There was no reason for me to get agitated there, especially because I'm below everyone else. There's no telling who's above me on my radar. So I just, I just need to learn to play that more patiently. I was playing a lot of the earlier scenarios in this game a lot more patiently. I was pretty proud of the way that I did that in this game. But that scenario is just, again, something I need to work on. Now, right here, I'm immediately flying off of my blue respawn. I do not want to be back there. I do not want to wait that spawn for my enemy, for my uh, teammates, so that they spawn back there too. I, that's really bad play. But I see this guy in the box tunnel. I call this box tunnel. Who knows what it's called here and I made down the way cutting off his uh, angles so you can see how, how I engaged this player I first threw a nade right here I know that grenade is gonna bounce right here I did some damage on him he backs down but as soon as I notice that he may not, he may go back into the box I throw another nade just to be safe An, a noob player would have run up here and thrown two nades down the boxes down through the box before they moved out and peeked the angle throw one nade, then peek the angle, then decide whether you want to throw the second nade. Double nading an area, unless you're double nading a hog with stickies, is is almost never a good idea. Now, you can see how I slid out here, grabbed the DMR, checked my left angle, so hopefully I'm not killed from the side, and my teammate is pushing up here on this rock ramp. You can see how uh, this guy across the way, um, these guys are pushing up on the rock ramp. Notice how on the theater mode it does not show this guy, this pain guy who's in the back of the warthog over here. That's because theater mode is incredibly buggy. I, I know I'm just gonna beat the dead, beat a dead horse, nuke the dead horse from orbit. I'm sorry. I'm just 
I'm just letting you guys know. Theater mode is incredibly laggy. Newsflash. So we're ahead by three kills. I see my teammates closing in on top junction, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I fly off this, this area right here, I can jump across. Now, I just want to pause and note something here. This area is incredibly underrated where I am right now, and it's not really shown in this film, but you can stay right here for long periods of time. You can crouch here, and they can't see you when you're in when they're in this top junction area. They don't know you're even there. It's very useful if you're crouching like right here, for example. Only players who are over here or directly top mid can see you. It's a crazy good spot to pause, to hide, take a breather. Um, as, it, as it is here, my teammates are going clutch, pulling an OS into the back of the hog for the gunner. That's a really nice play. I see these guys are trapped in back red. So the, immediately when I see this, I have to assume that more players are back here. When you see guys in back red right here, I'm assuming that these guys came from this back red respawn, which is exactly where they're respawning. They're respawning here, and, and two of these players also probably respawned down here and pushed up. So I'm assuming most of them are back here. So I'm immediately pushing to the right to get behind this angle. I take out that guy because he's already weak, and I'm trying to figure out what my teammates are shooting at here, trying to give them angles and long range fire. My teammate pushes into the right here, but I see that this guy has a plaza pistol, so I'm worried that my teammates is gonna die here. So I push out, try to get some good angles on him, but I end up being shot from the left. I have no idea where this guy is. Uh, he's actually pushing out to the left here. So I see that my teammate is definitely gonna die. I suspected that there might be a lot of people here. Wonder what I'm gonna do. Stay the heck alive. So at this point in the game, I'm 17 and four. Nobody's even close to that score. Okay, no way. So I'm just gonna pause here, wait for my teammates to push up and we can double team this guy. My teammate gets some good shots. I'm able to clean up a guy, get a protector medal, but my teammates are probably gonna get flanked from behind here. So I'm just jump up, jumping up here, waiting for these guys to push up, provide some more teammate support right there. Now I know I'm not able to team shot, okay, while I'm making those clamber jumps. I know I'm not shooting the same angle as my teammates all the time during that, but I'm staying alive. I'm being an annoying thorn in the enemy team's side, and overall, I'm not getting easily naded or letting a guy push up behind us and get an overkill. You know what I mean? I'm being an annoying enemy player to face, and that's really important. So we have four more kills to go. I see this, this guy's bottom center, and I also see that this guy rushed around bottom here. Right now, uh, the way I play this may be a little bit confusing to some people. The reason why I'm playing, I play the rest of the game the way I do, is because I have seen really good players use this spot that I'm in right now. It is very difficult to spot players here when you come around the corner. Most people will push around this corner, not see anyone, and can and walk on past. I've I've sat here and crouched, watched three people spawn right here. All three of them walk past me. It's hilarious. Okay, and I, I'm able to just shoot them in the back and just be really annoying with this spot. Very hard to see, especially when you're crouching behind this little uh, pillar here. So that's the reason I'm, you know, staying pretty covert here. We got two more kills to go, one more kill to go. And now I suddenly see that my teammate rushes out. So I'm like, okay, okay, I gotta go help my teammate for this kill. And I get the killing spree and the final kill. Uh, we win the game 100 to 90. And I got 20 kills, four deaths, seven assists. Shout out to my teammate getting 16 assists that game. Holy cow, that was pretty good. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this in-depth kind of uh, theater gameplay analysis. I know I didn't show a lot about the Red Attic and other things of that nature, but I thought that it was a decent film to help show my mentality and my thought process when I was playing through a game. So if you like this video, if it's helpful for you, please do leave it a thumbs up below. It does help other people find the video. Uh, share it with a friend if you think they would find it useful. Subscribe if you wanna see more content like this or if you like the way I've done this video in general. If you have any constructive criticism, leave it in the comments down below. Any questions, I frequently go through my comments and answer. So don't be shy, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video, really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever end of recording. Peace.